Hi everyone, my name is John Chi Liao. I'm the founder and CEO of CSL. So uh, today I'm going to introduce you a new technology called micro scoop. Uh, scoop is of course like ice cream scoop. We are picking up the protein inside a cell. You can see from this image, this was the motivation of developing this whole technology. Uh, this is, these are primary cilia inside cells. And you can see some cilia are green color and some cilia are green and red. At that time, I was trying to understand the difference of uh, uh, the proteome inside of this different kind of primary cilia. So that was when I was a faculty at Columbia and I asked uh, my member to cut uh, this cilia using laser micro dissection. And I said that, okay, let's cut 2000 of them and send to Mestec to see what the protein differences of, of this cilia. And, uh, and he cut five, he gave up, he said it's too hard to cut uh, because cilia are too small. And that's why we developed this whole technology. Uh, originally for my own research, and then later on, turned out many, many researchers want, want to use this. Uh, to go to the end of this technology from the very beginning, I was just trying to make it very quick. Uh, you can see what we are actually doing is we develop this super fast computer integrated interface to photo the proteins in the location you're interested in. In this example, th these are stress granules inside cells, super tiny, maybe uh, 500 nanometer to three microns. Uh, if you want to pick those proteins, it's basically impossible for any other technology. What we are doing is putting in the media with some uh, biotin-based probes, and we use light to induce this biotinylation. So you can imagine every Panta inside maybe 300, 500 different kind of protein will be biotinylated and later we can pull. So, I mean, this kind of summarizes the whole technology. Uh, ho hopefully, you feel this very exciting to, for, for your research. So, uh, with this kind of technology, basically, that's what kind of our entire life science dream to pick up the protein in the specific location you're interested in. So it can be applied to many different fields. Neuroscience, like here we have the beta amyloids or the neural growth uh, sites called mostly fiber glutens or, or many other things like the Lewy body in Parkinson. We can do. Uh, in cell biology, that was my original field. You can do CDI, I already talked about it. Stress granule was the image, the movie. Uh, there are many other things you can do, spindle poles, philopodia, or other things. Um, Cancer biology, now we can dig deeper into the cancer cells, maybe the cells, like when they invade across the uh, blood vessel, what are those cells in, in a specific location, like for focal lesion, what they are doing. Now we can do uh, identify those proteins. Uh, and many, many other fields like uh, here, uh, like immunology or fatty livers. So that, that's what, I'm going to show you that uh, what this method is to enable all these possible studies. So to do this uh, unbiased way for protein proteomic discovery, there are many existing methods like uh, immune immunoprecipitation, proximatic labeling, uh, like uh, Apex2, BioID, TurboID. So these are biochemical way. Um, you can uh, see that uh, proximal labeling and uh, immune precipitation, they are pretty good in isolating protein. But sometimes you get a non thing because of the protein at the location you, you do this proximal labeling, maybe because the protein is uh, generated in the other side and then go to the functional side. So you will pick up that protein that may, may not be what you need. And also for like a human sam samples or uh, mouse sample, it becomes very challenging. You have to clone into this uh, uh, site and then do not perturb the endog endogenous uh, state. That's uh, the challenge using all these methods. Fractionation, we can do some, uh, some specific problems, but most of the problems are hard. 
there's a lack of digestion. I already talked about it. The resolution and the sensitivity is is challenging to do this small structure that's uh, specific in the protein protein interaction site. And mass spec imaging also the uh, resolution and specificity uh, is the setting and sensitivity as well. So how do we uh, do this uh, microscope? Uh, so actually we integrate five different disciplines into one uh, system. So you have microscopy to determine where they are and also an, another illumination to do this photo trigger uh, biotonation. And photochemistry is this photo induced biotonation basically? Uh, I mean, I, I came up with this idea when I went to a dentist when I was at Columbia. So the dentist shine light in my mouth and then did it within point one second, it started the fire. So I was trying to say, okay, if it, I can use a focus laser light to trigger the protein to form. Originally, I was trying to do, we were, we were trying to do is uh, making it about uh, nanobubble tea. Right, so the tapioca. So we, we formed this tapioca and the centrifuge tapioca. And later on, it turned out the tapioca idea didn't work very well. And we, we come up with this the photo induced by accumulation. So, and then the recognition of the site you're interested in, you can use AI or image processing to do that, uh, to recognize. So every kind of different problem, now it can be studied uh, as long as your eyes can tell. And the mechatronics is a term in uh, uh, actual mechanical engineering that you do the automatic control so you can do everything very fast. And after that, the sample we have to use biochemistry to cool down the protein as biochemistry. So this is the system uh, of a microscope. You can see a microscope and then uh, we designed this optical system so that we can shine light to a specific location in a very high precision one pixel precision, and then also very high speed uh, in the time scale of 100 microsecond. With, with this kind of integration, that's possible for this uh, to work. In, previously, I originally just want to buy an existing microscope, two photon microscope to do that. I couldn't do it, so that's why we have to develop this technology to do it. So first, you uh, kind of choose the region you're interested in. Uh, here again is the just stress granule. So you can use regular image processing or AI to generate a mask. And this mask is the region you're interested in. Then you, you later on you want to shine light to, to it to do the photochemistry. And then in terms of photochemistry, in the media, you put this photoactive biotin based probes. Here is just one example biotin benzophenol. So in one side, you have uh, left side, you can see the benzophenone. Right side, you can see the biotin. Uh, biotin, everyone knows you can use stratolytin to pull, pull them out. And the benzophenone is a molecule. Once you shine light, you form a covalent bond with the CH bond. So that the, in the region, say in this uh, panta that you're interested in the stress granule, maybe inside these 300 different kind of proteins will be biotinic because of this light. So this light triggers this tagging, and then later you can pull them out. Um, so in this uh, location, we shine a two-photon light. Basically, you control this uh, a pair of gamma mirrors to shine light in the location you're interested in. Um, uh, this is pretty much like a 3D printer. If you, if you open up a 3D printer inside, some of them have this uh, gamma mirror kind of thing. And then also similar to the Tampoco or two photon laser uh, microscopy. Um, the, the important thing is you have to choose the region you're interested in, and then you have to choose for so many fields of view because so far we don't have PCR for proteins, right? So we only have uh, PCR for RNA. That's why in entire spatial field, most of people doing discovery, doing uh, RNA, not proteins, because no one knows how to amplify proteins. And here we just do it uh, like a 10,000 field of view. So you collect so many proteins in many, many fields of view, many and many cells, million of cells, so that you can isolate the proteins uh, enough for mass spec sensitivity. So after that, you, you can use cells, uh, cells uh, sample fixed cells or tissue sample like FFPE or fresh frozen 
for all these samples is you scrape these tissue or cells, slice all of them, put through this uh, surveillance bees, and surveillance will pull this biopenylated protein very precisely. So you can imagine this will be the only way so far to do high precision spatial protein purification. So once you have a purified, very pure protein from your location of your interest by light, then we send to LCMS MS to identify what protein they are, and uh, then it will give you a long list of the proteins. Uh, so this protein list will be very precise uh, in the location and uh, highly likely you can get a low abundant protein because we isolate from so many fewer of you. Again, this is uh, the movie of stress brain uh, You can see this uh, automation for, so imaging 0.1 second, and then AI or image processing calculation is 0.1 to 0.5 second. So this calculation on the fly. So this is different from 3D printer. 3D printer, if you want to put, uh, print the Eiffel Tower 6,000 layer, this all these coordinates are pre-calculated. Here, you need to calculate on the fly. Every time you have to calculate on the spot and then determine which one you are interested in. Uh, you can use the regular image processing. Here are just a few examples. We use regular image processing, dendritic like spines, or even nuclear core complex, we can do that. Uh, for AI, we already have this uh, software integrated, so you can train on the side with uh, a GPU, uh, maybe uh, like the other servers. And then at once, once you train, you get this uh, TensorFlow file, in our program, you just load this file. So every time you are training different things, say you are doing this uh, uh, synaptic content in the spreading assay, this, uh, the protein you're interested in the inside the actin ring, or the other problem is the uh, immune synapse, but uh, the T cell can, uh, cancer cell interface, or in this case, uh, TB interface, uh, then you can kind of shine light to this region. So every time you do a different problem, you can use a different AI algorithm. You just pull that uh, file, like a call in that file, and then you recognize automatically. So the resolution of the uh, labeling, you can see we shine a, a, a horizontal or vertical line here. Uh, you can see the, the labeling width by attenuation is about 240 nanometers. So you can basically do protein as, as good as like uh, immune synapse or the primary CD are very small region or even the PD-1, pd one interface in the cancer immune theory. So here are just a few examples to do the very precise labeling. You can see the biotonization very precise, even for nuclear core complex, very narrow region. Uh, so that's kind of the methodology I introduced here. I just want to give you one quick example. Uh, if you want to see more example, you can see the other video. We have more application that, uh, for more example. Uh, the stress granule here, we label the location of G3BP1. Um, the, the end result is a, a long proteome list, right? So as long as you are a stress granule expert, you see this uh, list and you say, okay, this is a pretty uh, high sensitivity and uh, specificity for, for the stress grain of specific proteins that uh, people know. And then that's the power of this method. You can pull this protein in a very specific location and show people the list. And then, of course, the more interesting part is the new protein that people didn't know. Here, I may just give you a few examples. Uh, RPSA that you can see they colocalize very well with G3BP1 in the stress grain of location. Uh, so we did that for many different proteins. Uh, here are just 12 examples. You can see all this has the stress granule colocalized proteins. And uh, this shows the discovery power of this method. It's not only finding one or two, we find several of them and most of them are correct. Uh, again, if you want to see more application, you can see the other video. Uh, I just want to summarize this methodology part. You can see that Microscope is so far probably the only existing technology that can do high precision spatial protein purification. 
And then with that, then now you enable this entire unbiased subcellular spatial proteomics studies that can be doing for disease studies or uh, basic uh, biology. And then the, this particular patient is guided by an autoscopy image. So you can imagine that as long as your eyes can tell, then AI can tell. So AI can tell them basically you can isolate protein in the location. And our precision is uh, 240 nanometer uh, in the specific uh, location specific. And so, so it's uh, enough for mass spec to detect so, so many proteins you saw in the stress training. Okay, with that, I just want to show you another uh, movie that we do. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the SSP mouse brain. We are trying to isolate the protein in private cilia in the brain. So basically, automatic calculation and a shining light cilia. Okay, thank you very much.